Hi all, hope you are doing good. This is Balagopal Reddy and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be talking about agentic rack. So firstly, let me tell you what is the content I'm going to cover in this video. I'll start with traditional rack flowchart and then I'm going to talk about the recent developments in terms of rack and and then I'm going to start explaining about the high level overview of agentic rack with some example. Later on, I'm going to go dive deep into the technical details of the agentic crack. And finally, I'm going to end the video with some pros and cons of the agentic crack. So without wasting time, let's get started. Yeah. So this is the flow chart. As you can see, there are so many components over there. We have knowledge sources, embeddings, vector stores vector store and large language model. So in order to get a deeper understanding about RAG, I would recommend you to watch my previous video where I have explicitly ex uh, given the information about all this. And also I have talked about the retrieval phase and generation phases as well. I'll be attaching the link of that video in the description as well as on the top right corner. Here, let me just give you a brief explanation of uh, uh, this flowchart. So imagine that you have some uh, knowledge sources like books, articles, or um, you know websites in the in electronic form, and you have something. You have a question related to uh, that research paper or anything. First, the whatever the information in the knowledge sources will be converted into the embeddings, which are in the numerical format, and also they preserve the semantic meaning of the context. Now, when you ask that question, the query will be transformed into the numerical representations called embeddings. And in vector store, this embeddings is compared to the embeddings of documents. The system will find later on, the system will find the most similar documents to the query and these documents will be given to the large language model along with the input query to get the output so this is this approach is fine as long as you have uh, the requirement to you know get the response from a, a specific knowledge base and this is a pretty straightforward response there is no complex uh, you know interactions happening between the components and all but because of the technology rapid, uh, rapidly advancing day by day, there is a lot of demand for more, uh, you know, better and accurate uh, responses. Because of that, we are moving forward to the agentic rag, which is very powerful. And you're going to understand why in, in the later um, part of the video. Now, let's move forward to agentic rack <laughs> as you can see over here it looks like an iterative approach right agentic rag is also called as agent paste retrieval augmented generation so think of it like instead of relying solely on large language model to generate answers we have agents but actively engage with the information these agents can can be skilled researchers let's say they i mean they can break down the complex questions into smaller and manageable steps and they can efficient efficiently you know sift through different documents to get the most relevant information even they can compare multiple documents for the information like that by utilizing these agents agentic crack delivers more comprehensive accurate insightful answers let me give you an example so that you will understand it in a better way. And later we can go into the technical details. Let's say, so this is one of the example which I have come up with. <laughs> Imagine a user walks into the library and he has a specific question like the impact of AI on modern education and he wants to compare it over the years in terms of AI utilization and all. It looks like a complex query, right? Because we have to find out the information related to the impact. And also from looking at the various documents, we have to compare 
the utilization over the years. So how would uh, an AI agent uh, rag will, uh, you know, tackle this problem is, let's assume this architecture. We have manager who can oversees the team's workflow like this and assigns the tasks to different agents based on their expertise. We can also think it as, I mean, the, the manager represents the orchestrator in the agentic uh, rag flow. Now, we also have librarians who locates, uh, you know, relevant books or articles or documents. Even they can search, uh, you know, search for the research papers online and all. They will get the information. These librarians represents the retrieval capabilities like vector database and all. In the what does the researcher will do? Researcher will uh, read, synthesize the information to extract meaningful insights. The researcher represents the generative models processing the ret retrieved knowledge. Now we also have an analyst who can break down the information and identify the patterns and draw graphs and, and write reports and all. This analyst represents the contextual refinement or task specific agents. Finally, we also have a verifier. This verifier will double check the facts and ensure the output is accurate. This verifier represents the verification module in the uh, agentic rag workflow. So once they perform all the tasks, they're going to get a most accurate response as the answer. And this is how it looks like. See how detailed and how, uh, you know, sophisticated it looks like. So the information is categorized in based on the aspects as well as the timelines, timeline, etc. Now let's go into uh, the technical details. As you can see here, we have three components like LLM core, retrieval engine, and agent framework and there are the intra the arrow marks are nothing but the interactions we have refined query retrieved context decision and uh, decisions and goals execution feedback right so here is how it works the agent analyzes the in initial query and refines it and breaks it down into smaller tasks then the retrieval engine searches for relevant information like articles or code or research papers, anything to support the query and will give the retrieved context to the LLM code. The agent later on determines the best approach to answer this query by, you know, setting specific goals and decisions. Then after what will happen is the system will get, give the execution feedback to the large language model. Uh, you know, by monitoring the performance and the quality of the query, which it will generate. So this is the this is also a high level approach, technical approach, but it covers the entire meaning of the agentic rack. And this is the iterative approach. Even if the uh, quality of the response is not good, the um, the process will happen again. Now let's break, uh, let's break it one by one. So this is the flowchart which I have created for better understanding. First of all, let's look at the key components as you, uh, as you have, as you already have basic idea about this, we are just adding the agentic features to the traditional rack. That's it. First, we have uh, unstructured data sources. This is where the raw information resides. It can be documents, uh, you know, uh, the pictures, the media, and we also have conversation or the information in the cloud, anything. Now the chunking strategies, the text from these uh, sources is broken down into smaller and manageable checks. Mostly we do the para either paragraph or semantics or uh, chunks strategies. Later on, these chunks are converted into the numerical representations, as I said earlier, and these embeddings will be stored in the vector database. 
And we also have the knowledge layer, which contains a relational database, blob storage, and vector database. In not in relation database, we have will be storing the schemas like nothing but the data models. And uh, blob storage is nothing but uh, the actual format of the data, whatever the raw data, which the user is giving. And we also have the LLM layer where we have foundational models. You can say like that. These generative models can, can summarize the text and, uh, you know, translate languages and answer uh, the questions based on the user user's requirement. We also have available tools layer where we have so many tools that an agent framework will leverage to perform certain functions and assist the user. So this is the entire um, you know, framework, or you can say architecture of the rag, uh, agentic rack. And I just want to mention, I just want to quickly emphasize here that the agent is the core and the architect uh, and the orchestrator of this workflow. It receives the user's query, interacts with the LLM and retrieval components, and also generates the final response. It will take care of the feedback and if the feedback is not good and it will again initiate the process and will try to get the most accurate response for the user. And I hope you like this architecture <laughs> and see how detailed and I mean, see how easy it, it is. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of uh, agentic rack. When it comes to features, this is continuous learning, like agentic rack systems are designed to learn and adapt continuously. Means they can acquire the new knowledge and skills over time. And, and by that, they can improve its performance and also they can expand the, their capabilities on, on in generating the quality responses. It also have context aware decision making means it can understand the context of the query and perform work based on the context. And it has customizability. It can be customized because uh, to meet specific needs. Let's say if, uh, if we are working on it, if it is working on a specific domain, we can fine tune it with specific data sets and integrate it with other uh, systems also. And it is more goal oriented meaning they can break down the complex tasks into smaller steps and uh, work together um, you know achieve, to achieve a specific objective finally you can leverage the tools to perform certain functions uh, even from uh, even it can interact with the outside environment so the, here are uh, some of the challenges like complexity the architecture is a little bit uh, complex compared to the previous case and resource intensive means uh, since there are so many interactions happens, uh, there will be, uh, I mean, it needs more computational power and error propagation. This error propagation means, let's say if an agent made a mistake and at one step and that error will be propagated to the next steps till an orchestrator or verifier checks the error and try to rectify that in the next steps so this takes longer and uh, so that is one of the challenge for agentic rack so that's all that's all from my side guys i hope you like this video and you learn from uh, something from by watching this video and if you like this video please do subscribe and uh, share it with your friends thank you so much for coming this far and listening this video I hope you have an amazing day ahead. This is Balagopal Reddy signing off. Thank you so much, guys.